Danger Dolan. From a dog that turns into the Hulk to useless NPCs that run into walls, we count 15 of the worst NPCs we've ever had the pleasure of escorting. Number 15. Earthworm Jim Peter Puppy. For Pete's sake is the level that has you protect a completely oblivious dog that struts his way towards the end of the level, but he won't jump without aid and you definitely want to protect him. The reason you want to do that? The second he gets hit, he'll transform from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde and will bite the crap out of you, take you back to the previous part of the level, and then reduce your health. Luckily the level isn't too difficult, but it's definitely annoying to have to redo a section because your escortee got knocked around a little bit. Number 14. Yoshi's Island is a good game despite the fact you're escorting someone throughout the entire game. However, this doesn't mean that Baby Mario isn't annoying. If you haven't played the game, you might be wondering what it is that makes him annoying. Well, since he's a baby, every time you drop him, which is a decent amount, he'll start crying until you pop his bubble and pick him back up. Now, I don't know about you, but I love the sound of a baby crying constantly as you're trying to play a fucking game. <coughs> Yeah, that's great. That's so fun. Number 13. Red Dead Redemption, Miranda Fortuna. So Miranda comes up to you in Mexico and asks you to escort her away from the Federals. And make sure no one follows her while you're on the last responsive horse cart in the game, as well as having a time limit to complete the mission. Escorting Miranda Fortuna turned from bad to infuriating thanks to a simple glitch that may or may not have happened to you. The important thing is that it happened to me. The glitch prevented me from using any weapons whatsoever. Of course, I didn't realize it was a glitch. I thought I just had to lose the Federals, which, as it turns out, isn't all that easy, despite having four horses pulling the stagecoach, which, as it turns out, contains 60 tons of gameplay mechanics slowing it down. Number 12. Metal Gear Solid 2, Emma Emmerich. I guess Kojima had some inkling of an idea that people would think that Raiden is too girly. So to provide some disparity, he put in Emma, who has the least amount of figurative cojones out of anyone dead or alive, real or fiction. Seriously, she'll cry more about a bug than a man that has just been told that his whole family is dead, his balls are inoperable, non-functional, and need to be removed. On top of everything else, you have to escort her through the only other video game trope that ties with escort missions, and that's an underwater area in a game that's otherwise designed to stay the hell away from the Z-axis. Number 11. World of Warcraft Kadga's Servant. Every escort quest in the early version of WoW was unbearably annoying. The escort walked faster than your walk and slower than your run, forcing you to tap W more times than asking, why would Western Wombats want warm woolly Winchester wares when we're wondering with wallabies who want wardens who would wonder why Wollongong werewolves won't willingly wigwag with wedgies? In the Baron's chat. But the worst of them all is the City of Light quest. It makes you follow an NPC that you can't auto-follow throughout the entirety of the City of Shattrath for eight and a half long arduous annoying minutes without fighting anyone. This wouldn't be too bad if it was the first quest in an important quest chain that leads you to choosing between two of the major factions in the Outland. I mean, it's like Blizzard was actively trying to force you to tear out your hair with boredom. Follow me, stranger, this won't take long. Yeah, bullshit! Number 10. Perfect Dark, the President. Protecting the President isn't as glamorous as it sounds, especially the future where an evil corporation will hand you to the ends of the earth and clone the President for their own uses. When you're tasked with finding and escorting the president back to Air Force One, you have no idea that the president is actually a senile old man prone to going on long walks towards drones with the full intent on killing himself. Of course, maybe through old man Prezi's eyes, the drones are pretty butterflies intent on giving him candy and his cocktail of meds that keep him from dying. Luckily, this is just one part of a mission, or you might be tempted to call up the actual President of the United States and have a few mildly incriminating words. Number 9. Dead Rising was released early in the 360's lifespan. Combine this with the fun gameplay and not much else being out at the time meant that just about everyone played this game. However, there's a part of the game that's deplorable, and no, it's not using the camera to get panty shots of zombies. It's the survivors that are only still alive because they have no brains for the zombies to chew on. 
For some reason, the survivors have the same issues as the Rareware games from the 64. They will run into walls, into packs of enemies, and generally act like their AI was programmed by an ape. Number 8. Warcraft 3 is a great game, but it has some frustrating levels to deal with, and the one I hate most is the Long March, which requires you to escort four Kodos through a long linear canyon with infinite spawning asshole centaurs without losing about two of them. Admittedly, this isn't the hardest level in the game, but my completely real and not at all hyperbolic OCD made me restart a save whenever I lost a single Kodo or Tauren, which happened at least a hundred times. The Tauren weren't essential to beating the level, but I like Taurens and their giant faux native American totem poles that I'm still bitter about not being able to equip in WoW, I mean... Come on, Blizzard. Number 7. Fable 1 was a pretty good game, heavily marred by the hype brought by Peter Molyneux's lies, but still enjoyable. However, this game has an aspect that is designed to frustrate you and bring you to the evil way of thinking. And shock horror, that's the escort missions. Not only are the people you escort annoying and useless, they will occasionally stop following you if you get too fast, which is something you want to do if you want to get the full reward. Which brings me to the worst part of it all, if they get attacked for longer than it takes to realize the mistake you've made in initiating the quest, you will get a lower reward, and if you want to be a goody two-shoes like me, they tempt your hand by giving you the full reward if you kill the pain in the ass that simply won't stop jabbering and wandering into a pack of bandits. Number 6. The Witcher, Vesna. This one is near the start of the game. It's night time, and there are a bunch of fire-breathing monster dogs around. Some bird named Vesna runs up to you and asks you to escort her to her grandma's house. And of course, you do it in case you can collect one of the infamous sex cards. The problem is that the path to her house is riddled with the aforementioned dogs and trying to take on five of these things at once whilst protecting someone that has no fighting ability will make you want to rip your hair out. However, I didn't know at the time that you can make everything easier by going down the path before doing the quest, which lets you kill some of the dogs prematurely. When I heard about this, I went into my quiet place and wrote some angsty poetry about the injustice of life. Number 5. Bioshock Little Sisters Playing as a big daddy in the Proving Grounds makes for one of the most frustrating levels in video games. Even though Little Sisters can't be damaged by your weapons and plasmids, in the rest of the game they are about as weak as you would expect a little girl to be in this part. Not only do you have to escort one of the weakest escorts in gaming history, you also have constant hordes of enemy splices coming at you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the Little Sisters will trigger every single security system in Rapture. In fact, I'm pretty sure she triggers every security system in the world, but you can't tell because you're too busy wishing you killed every Little Sister you saw. Number 4. GoldenEye 007 Natalia. Hackers are a crazy bunch. They have no need for mice and seem to bash their fingers into the keyboard randomly in order to provide results, which may or may not take exactly the right amount of time to provide some dramatic timing. Natalia, however, seems to go against that stereotype as she takes forever to complete any task involving computing, half convinced that she takes an hour to type in her PIN code into an ATM. Not only does she take forever, but she also seems to share the president's disdain towards living as she will walk straight into enemy fire or a wall or pretty much anywhere but the direction you want her to go in. Number 3. Resident Evil 5 Shiva is one of the main reasons I don't like Resident Evil 5. If you're playing the game solo, she turns the entirety of the game into one excruciatingly long escort mission. And if you try and play split screen like all real men do, your screen will split in the most awkward way possible. Shiva has the intelligence of a brain dead worm that drank way too much the night before where it made an absolute fool of itself. But of course it's so dumb and drunk that it thought people were laughing with it, not against it. So it kept singing ABBA to the tune of the Wiggles. In addition to her horrendous AI, she uses her supplies in what's supposed to be a survival horror game. But then again, the lack of horror elements makes me wonder if Capcom thought they were making a faithful adaptation of the third Resident Evil movie. Number 2. Amy from Amy. I can only imagine what the developers of Amy were thinking. Hey, kids these days love those escort missions. They're always talking about them on the internets. Let's make an entire fucking game out of it. When they heard that Ico already existed and that people actually liked that game, they must have been torn. On one hand, they knew it could work, but on the other, they didn't want to be copycats. Their solution? 
You play as the weak is piss escortee and the NPC is the strong one. This could have worked if they did it right, but as you can guess from it being on this list, it, it didn't. Instead they made a game that no one in their right mind would enjoy playing, except maybe a masochist. Number 1. Monster Hunter for you, the eggs. I would like to start off by saying that I don't think I've ever hated a mission in a game I liked so much before. That made me so mad I went to the store, bought three dozen eggs and threw them at the game box whilst rocking like a maniac. But seriously, if you haven't experienced these missions, I will explain them to you. First, you pick up an egg at what is the furthest part of the map, then you have to run it through the least intuitive path back to the starting point all the while one or two giant dick for brain monsters are chasing you. But that's not all, if you attempt to dodge, get hit by anything, run into a wall in a weird way, run out of stamina or need to scratch your balls, you will drop the egg. And the best part? You have to do it three goddamn times. It is literally easier to kill the monsters first, which will generally take between 15 and 40 minutes, and then deliver the eggs. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!